The lockdown is destroying businesses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from news.com.au which is, well, discussing the Victorian lockdown. So lockdown is a major blow for businesses, the Lord Mayor says. You've got, you got to feel sorry for anyone who has a retail business where you pretty much need customers in the CBD. I, I don't know how it's going to come back. I don't know what chance you have of coming back. We had a look in previous videos about people giving away businesses, fully fitted out restaurants, cafes, a fish and chip shop here in Brisbane because they want to get out of those leases, everyone. They want to get out of that constant drain of money away from you. There are probably people there that are struggling to earn anything. Even if they do it through Uber Eats and all of that delivery stuff, you struggle to make money there as well. You might as well do it at home then, if you, if you don't need a, a shop. So, Melbourne's Lord Mayor says, The five-day snap lockdown that came into effect in Victoria on Saturday has been disastrous for businesses. Uh, this is something you have to plan for now. This is it. This is the the expected government intervention every time there's one or two cases now in our cities. It seems to be what's happening. A comprehensive package is needed to help Melbourne businesses survive in the wake of the third lockdown, Lord Mayor Sally Cap says. Councillor Cap says the five-day snap lockdown that came into effect in Victoria on Saturday has been disastrous for businesses. She is calling for a comprehensive package from all levels of government to hand businesses a lifeline. It is dire for so many businesses. They're making decisions every day about whether they are going to be able to open their doors and keep people in employment, the councillor told Nine's Today program on Monday. Here's the thing. You've got to make some hard decisions if you're in business. If it's worth keeping the people on the job keeper even if you know even if you've got you're getting the job keeper payments there's still all the other costs associated with it you still have to pay all the super they're still accruing holiday time they're still accru accruing sick time they're still accruing long service leave and well some of that you're gonna have to stump up out of your own pocket so imagine that a business completely closed you're making no money you still have all your expenses. Sure, you're getting wages subsidized partially, but there's still all those other costs. I really hope we don't hear about businesses that were trading while in Tolvanord, still trying to kick the can down the road. And then, well, their generosity comes back to bite them. It's dire for so many businesses. I've already read that. That's why calling out for a comprehensive package is so important. We did feel like we were moving into revival and we are very much back into asking for a survival package to make sure brisbane can be open for business councillor cap said traders were reeling after after a disastrous weekend especially with events such as valentine's day and the lunar new year for small businesses here in the city we are the most impacted municipality in australia she said the heartbreak across so many businesses has been enormous and very widespread a small business community particularly needs certainty and they need support and that includes a comprehensive package with all levels of government to create that economic stimulus to keep our city moving forward not calls for more well for a more sensible approach to this or for alternatives to just having these snap lockdowns for so few cases or for having a staggered lockdown, maybe only the people with the highest comorbid comorbidity factors should be the ones that are restricted or protected rather than everyone. Can't have that, Florian. That'd be that'd be the ultimate in fat shaming. You know, if you we don't need we don't need all these these uh you know tracking apps or passwords or stuff. We just need scales at every every shop. And if you're morbidly obese, you got to go home. How about that, guys? What do you reckon? And <laughs> you think that'll go over well? Do you think it will? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. But it's true, guys. That's it. You know? Councillor Cap said a support package would be needed to provide support for sectors that need it most, such as hospitality and tourism. 
offering an assurance there is a future for business in Melbourne and Victoria. But see, this is the thing. None of this money is magicked out of nowhere, everyone. It's burden for future generations. Think about it. The money the government gets is work that you have to do. It's work that you have to do. We all work for a big chunk of the year just for the man, just to hand that over to the government. And you'll get all these people going, oh, fair share this, fair share that. It's rubbish. You're all forced to give up money to the state. So, I mean, you can see why some people go, you know what? No, not going to participate. Not going to work. Can't blame them. So, particularly with what they're wasting money, just compare the stats from, you know, we'll have a look at this. We'll, we will look at this. So I've got these stats. We have a look here. This was shared by Tim Smith MP. So a tale of two states. So, the total travellers quarantined in Victoria was 35,666. In New South Wales, it was 124,893. The total COVID cases, 20,456 versus 4,950. The deaths, 820 to 56. Hmm. Which ones has had, which state has had all the strict lockdowns? You know, they're the numbers, everyone. Look at the scale of the quarantine. Look at the difference. And yet they love him. There are people there that think, you know, he's saving them. They're begging for the authoritarian boot on their throat. Please, sir. Please. This is con that's, that's the most concerning thing about all of this. Is the fact the the number of Australians that are happy f to be ruled over like this. You'll, you'll see them in the comments. They'll, all, they'll get angry because I'm even criticizing this. I'll refer to, to pieces of work written by D.A. Henderson, the man who won the President's Medal of, uh, as part of the process for eradicating polio. You know, I'm not making this shit up myself. I'm referring to people that are reputable. You can't even put a counter-narrative forward anymore. That's the scariest thing, where this can lead. I've done another video today. I don't know if I'll release it before or after this one about how in the the UK, the NHS put do not resuscitate orders on the health records of people with learning disabilities. Awesome. Yep, that's it. State control all the way, guys. <laughs> this is where the argument of, you know, I know slippery slope can be a fallacy, but bloody hell, it seems like it's happening. It really does. Socialism, you know, it just leads to authoritarianism. Then it leads to, well, you know, there's going to be a sense of entitlement and injustice, and they'll have to focus it on different groups. Happened every single time. So, this lockdown, number three, is a major blow for Melbourne. But we can't give up. We have to stay focused and unified to make sure this five-day lockdown does not go on any longer. Remember when they said just two weeks to flatten the curve? Remember that. I, I don't know anymore. Guys, it's, it's just crazy. You know. Here's the thing. Uh, now, apparently vitamin D levels are also, you know, it has a 60% higher survivability rate or cure. You know, it helps in addressing this illness. Well, you know, I live in Queensland. What do we have out here? What's the difference between Queensland, the further north you get, and Victoria? Well, there you go. So, are we, we are really making sure we are staying focused on people doing the right thing over this lockdown. So it doesn't need to be extended. And that's the business feel that they have the right support coming. Well, this is the problem, everyone. When you have political, your political class that are all in lockstep with each other. You know, she's just begging for money for businesses. You know, sitting there smiling. But... This is why you want to have opposition. You want to have competition. This is why we need to shift the Overton window and people need to learn the value of their preferences. So you have a mix, a greater mix in Parliament. In Victoria, at least, even at a state level, they've got at least some mix. Ah, oh boy. Well, what do you reckon, guys? 
Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care everyone, have a great day and I will, I will see you next time. Bye for now.